One of the benefits I'm seeing of hunting as a father is how it can actually bond your family together. Being able to spend time together in the outdoors is hard to replace. The Yaga Bay Waterfowl Management Area was first constructed in 1937. It was the first Pittman-Robertson Act funded project in the whole nation. So that's really cool that we have that right here in our backyard in Utah. We create a lot of great forage out in the open water and that attracts ducks, geese, and swans. Utah in general is one of the most important nesting areas for cinnamon till on the entire continent. 2020 has been a great example of how great partnerships can be. Our annual operating budget is $50,000. Doesn't allow us any extra money to go above and beyond and do any projects. We replaced 84 water control structures that gave managers the ability to actually manage the wetlands. We have cleaned channels and rebuilt dikes that also give managers the ability to manage the water levels. We wouldn't be able to do any of the projects that we've done let alone $300,000 worth of projects. This partnership benefits the general public from hunters all the way to non-consumptive users. So these marsh masters are the best tools that managers have along the shores of the Great Salt Lake now. They're totally amphibious, so we can go any direction we want. The Phragmites is an invasive, noxious weed, and it takes the whole marsh over. It, it outcompetes all native vegetation and it has no wildlife value. We started our project in 2006 to control the frag. We controlled most of it in areas that we could with the equipment that we had. But there were a lot of areas that had Phragmites that we were unable to get to. And these marsh masters now allow us to get to those areas, control the frag, we can get in there and spray them in the fall and get in with these mowers. It has allowed a lot of native vegetation to take the area over again. SFW, last summer, we were able to build this dike, put in water control structures, and actually fill this area up. There was an, the old remnants of a dike here. It was rebuilt last summer. There's water in here, thousands of ducks in here, and they wouldn't have been here otherwise today. So uh, we probably have more bird use days today than we have had in you know the previous 10 years going right where we want it right on cue <laughs> thanks sfw it's, pr it's pretty incredible what happens when you flood an area up and and fix it the way it should be see one of the biggest struggles with upland game and waterfowl is finding the funding source to go in and do these type of projects especially on this larger scale you know, in big game we have the conservation permit program, which provides millions of dollars to go out and do habitat restoration and transplants. But when you move into this side of the division, the funds tend to dry up a little bit. And you know, that's one thing where we've been able to come in and help with you know, the expo and the 200 permits there. A lot of these projects we looked at today here were funded through that and also chapter money. You know, it's important that we as sportsmen work together as partners with the division and even other partners to help expand this uh, this revenue source to where you can continue to do good work out here. Teaching my kids conservation principles is so important to me because it encompasses so many aspects of life that they need to give back and be grateful and I want my kids to appreciate the fact that they get opportunities to go hunting and not be entitled to the biggest buck on the mountain or the most ducks at the marsh. They get a chance to go out and be with their family and spend time and make memories, and that's what it's all about for me.